Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas, fantastic little sunrise, deep in the forest, waterfall, cabin on stilts, rope bridge, stairs, trees, moss, grass, everything. Oh my goodness, you are obviously excited about painting this one. That's why you clicked on the link. So check the description down below, find all the colors you need, make sure you get your canvas nice and wet, get ready to throw some paint on it, we're gonna do it just like this. Hey guys, welcome back. Holy cow, what have we done so far, right? Well, we have our Bob Ross liquid white today and our black gesso from Liquitex Acrylic Mediums, this black gesso, I don't know how well you can see it. That's what we did our trees in the bottom, covered the entire canvas and the sides with the black gesso like that. Left this area white, now we're prepping it with our Bob Ross Liquid White. So, we're gonna dip into our cup just very, the smallest little bit, because we don't wanna cover up all this white, but I do want the canvas to get wet and just come down about that far. See, the more we try to paint over it, the lighter these are gonna become, and they're gonna be like that, hopefully, Gonna pick up some of the color from our sky and be able to drop that into our trees. It's gonna be fantastic. So, don't wanna do too much white. We have it all over the whole canvas. Very, very small amount. And we're gonna switch brushes. There we go. See, like, as we come down here, there's such little amount of liquid white on there that we're not even covering over too many of these trees like that, right? Very cool if we could have, like, the sun kind of beam in through the trees like that. Oh, it'd be fantastic. Just cool little things, right? That's what we're gonna end up doing with our with our color. It's gonna be very neat. Can't do it everywhere though, so don't do too much. There we go, we're gonna switch brushes. We're gonna open up our liquid clear. This looks just like this, Bob Ross liquid clear. I hope everyone else's jar looks as gross as my jar does. Otherwise, I'm just messing up. Now we're gonna dip in a little bit into there, come into the bottom. Everywhere that there's black, just kind of dump a little bit. That way we don't have a whole chunk down at the bottom that you have to blend out, right? And now, I'm gonna come back in here and make our canvas nice and slick with this liquid clear, just back and forth, back and forth. Don't wanna come up and mix these areas too much. We don't need a whole lot of liquid clear up by the tip tops of the trees, just mainly down around the bottom where we're gonna be working for a while. This part we've already done, right? We don't need to work on that anymore. That's just gonna do it for ourselves, hopefully. It'll be very cool. Just mixing it in all over the place. And I understand if you want to fast forward through this part, man, my wrist is starting to hurt big time. Big time. We're gonna double check the glare, gonna make sure everything's nice and cool and ready to go. There we go. Back and forth and we are ready. Poof, let's wash these brushes off. Wash the brushes. Now, if you don't already know, I have a bunch of videos about how to wash the brush. You can find them on my channel part of my YouTube shorts playlist. You can go to the playlist and find everything. I try to make everything easily findable. So, very cool. Get all those nice and clean. Uh, we don't, we want very dry brushes when we come up here. So dry your brushes off. Make sure they're nice and dry. Get those little bits of uh, bristle out of there. We don't need those. That's extra, that costs you extra to have all those bristles in there. Okay, let's go through all of our colors now. Uh, cadmium yellow, the thalo green, thalo blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, titanium white. I'm going to try to do a cool little sunset out of here. So let's see what we can do. Let's just see what we can do. Put everything back. I'm going to save this little kind of petri dish of liquid white, whatever I shook up and got stuck to the top of the lid. That's what we're going to save. Maybe we'll do some highlights with that. We might need more. We can always go back and get more, right? You can hit the pause button, go back and get more stuff. You never have to use as much paint as I have on the palette. I prep for three days worth of painting in a row. That's like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is when I get to paint. Even though you're watching this on a Wednesday, right? And that's part of the work, is having to prep all the videos to go out. So man, this looks really cool already. I'm kind of thinking like a yellow sunset in here and then just blending it out into darker colors at the top, which would be really cool. So let's get a little bit of our yellow on the brush. I'm gonna use a one inch brush. I'm gonna come over here. A little bit of yellow, don't need a whole lot. Just pulling it out, making sure all the bristles have a little bit of yellow on there. Don't need a lot, we can always add more. Maybe let's use our cup and try, I wanna save this bit as being like the brightest area. So let's use our cup and go around it, just like that. Just so we cover the edge, and then let's take that yellow and push it out. And look at how it just, all those trees just stand out through that yellow. Look, pull some of that into there too. Everywhere that we had pulled that white out, pull some of that yellow out into there. It's gonna give it a cool little bit of light as it comes out. That's exactly what I wanted it to look like. 
Fantastic. And we're gonna blend this yellow, pulling it away from the edge and then pulling it in because we don't need it to be super bright. So pull it in down to where it was. It'll mix in with that liquid white. It'll become very, very, very light. You'll be able to tell that's where our sun is coming out of, right? Very cool. Take our cup, we can put that away and we can even switch back to our bigger brush now. Go into a little bit of our crimson, right? But you don't wanna go straight in crimson. You gotta go mix it with our yellow, just a little. All right, mix it in there. It's gonna be a lighter color. And then we can come up here and start to drop in, leaving room for it to grow. It wants to grow down. So you gotta leave areas for it to grow. Look, put it down here in the, behind our trees as well. So it will shine through and you get all that light coming through the trees. Very cool. Let's come over here and drop it again. And remember, leave areas where it can blend down because it's gonna wanna grow. Now let's go into our crimson. We're gonna come up here. It's gonna be a little darker color. Whoop, shaking the whole easel there. Just like that. A Little bit of the crimson from over here. I like having a buffer of the crimson between the reds and the yellows. That way if our blue decides to grow too far, it can't come in and ruin our whole scene. A Little bit of blue, a little bit of black together. Woo, just like that. Very dark in the sky. Very cool. Don't wanna let it grow too far. I'm gonna cover the edges. Always cover the sides. It makes it easier on your buyer. They don't have to buy a frame for your painting. Man, that's gonna look really neat. Okay, now we'll switch to a dry brush. Or we can take the time to wash the brushes or we just switch to a dry brush, right? I'm gonna come in here, just grab some of that yellow, pull it out, grab some of the red, pull it back in, or the orange, I guess. Start to mix it very softly until we really can't tell where that yellow and red met. And a lot of these things will become very cool little bits of cloud if you don't overdo them, right? I'm always worried about doing too much, so do less. There we go, blend these out. Even though all this blue is gonna start to grow in and condense our sky back, you wanna have these blended out first. So don't touch the blue. Come in, right? maybe there's a little bit, you can pop in, maybe there's a little bit of red, far away little red cloud back there, just in the dead center of that yellow. We can throw some white over the top of that. It'll be really cool. All right, take some of this guy. Now, once we come up into this dark color, it's really going to want to grow down. So don't let it come too far. And you control that with your amount of pressure. The pressure on your swipes, right? That, look at that. That's cool. We may have to redo that one little bit. But hey, you try something for the first time, you're going to have to redo something. There we go. Let some of that blue grow down a little. You know what I mean? It's not going to all be a, all the same. Take this guy, his side can grow down way far. Look at that, just pulling it straight down. Some of those streaks will look like really, really, really cool clouds. Or you can blend them all out. Nice and soft. Cool little thing, right? Less pressure. Real hard pressure in the corners as we're trying to blend all that out. But then as we come down, we're touching it less and less, kind of pulling our hands away because we don't want it to grow too far and end up, you know, somewhere where we don't want it to be. Just like that. A little bit more crimson on our brush. Ooh, these nice deep dark bits of cloud that come across. And this guy lives back in here. And then we can always add our trees back in front, do all sorts of things. Maybe we'll pop in this guy back in here too. Just making it nice and soft. Kind of twist it up. You don't want to have too much color on your brush so you can always switch or clean it, right? Mix that guy in. And then we'll throw some white over the top of him. He'll look like a really neat little cloud. Very soft little circles. Kind of pulling it in, doing whatever we want. It's, it's literally gonna, it's not even gonna matter. Whatever we do is what we do. I'm gonna soften this guy just a little bit more because he's a little thick there. Man, just like that cool little blue bit to the bottom of the cloud even. And the more and more we mix that on our yellow, it's gonna wanna go very green, right? We don't want that to happen. So let's switch. We're going to go to a white on our fan brush right here, just like that. A little bit of white. Come in, start to dab in the bits of clouds that we really want to shine through, right? Here, a little bit back there. Come back with our brush. Very lightly start to mix those guys up. Try to stay out of your guys' way. Bam, 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 bam. As much as I can anyway. Just start to mix it up until it starts to look like a weird little bit of cloud. It's gonna have light areas and dark areas and areas that you can't really tell what's going on in. 
and that's what's cool about the clouds. They're, they're all gonna be different. They're gonna be your own little bit of cloud, right? Versus someone else's. There we go. Just kind of lay it out however you want and start on this side so you can see. And as you mix it together, it starts to blend with the colors underneath. And you get these cool little bits of shadow and cloud. It's very neat, very neat, very neat little thing. Now this guy we went super dark on. So let's do the bottom side of him. We'll add that bit of white color in and then see if we can't blend it because all the light would be hitting this guy from the bottom. So see if we can't blend it upwards with our strokes very softly. Doing little mini circles to give it the effect that it's got that white underside to it and the very dark top. Very soft, right? It's far off little thing. Very cool. Very, very cool. All right, let's take, just so we can get our brains back in the game, take a little bit of the black on our brush and just kind of go back over with this guy. There we go, just pushing him, pushing that cloud backwards, right? That got, cloud got a little bit too thick for our, our bits of trees, it got covered. There we go, this guy up here too. Get him, boom, just so he stands out in front, that's all, don't need anything. We don't want our tree trunks way back behind the clouds. That's not gonna make any sense. That's not gonna make sense to anybody. There we go. A Little bit more of the black, come up to this guy. Just the littlest bit. Doesn't have to be the brightest thing you've ever seen. Just the soft little things. Look at that light shining through the, the trees. It's really cool. Really fantastic. And you guys know me. Every so often we gotta put a little contrail in there. Show a little bit of humans coming out of the cloud at a very, very, very slight angle. Doesn't have to be perfect even, right? It's not gonna be, there's always wind. There's always everything going on up there. It's never gonna be this perfect shape. Make sure we don't try to ruin it, Josh. There we go. Straighten it out and then just very, very, very softly taking it, just wanna flatten it. Just the slightest little bit. And you get this cool little chemtrail just popped out of a cloud back there. The more and more and more you mix it, the softer and softer it becomes. Very neat. And we can do like a roadway through here. We can do all sorts of stuff. But I had planned on doing a, uh, a bit of a, like a waterfall scene. So let's try to do that, right? Maybe blast some of this light, just like a clock would, down through the trees like that. Just so we have a little bit of light, a little bit of extra stuff we can play with. That's very cool. Not too much straight down though, right? It's never gonna be all the way through at the same thing. And you don't wanna have the light everywhere, right? You gotta have those little areas of darkness, bam, just like that. Very cool. Gotta have the light and the dark together. That's very neat. I love the trees, I love everything about it. Let's get a little bit of our paint thinner into our kind of black or crimson blue and, and, uh, and black mixture. And maybe we'll just go and add a couple little, couple little tree branches off to that guy. Just a couple. They don't need to be all crazy. Different things, and all of them don't have to be the same. You know, they don't have to look the same. They don't have to have the same amount of branches. Just little differences. Sometimes they got some off the side or some back here. You never can tell where it's going to grow off the side and off the top. That one needs to be a little bit sharper in my mind. There we go. Cool little scraggly little tree. All right, this guy, maybe you had one that came off of here. But remember, we gotta make our, our trunk capable of holding out a branch like that, which means it has to be thicker where it meets the tree versus thinner where it's way off out there. All right, and this guy back here, he had a little one, it's off there. Very light little guy way back there. Might not even see that one. This guy though, he was one of our trees that had to get covered back there. So we'll allow him to shine through just a bit. Take our dark color and just blend him in just slightly. So we don't lose all those cool little bits, light and all that. We don't wanna cover up all that. That's why we put it there. Very neat. Very cool little bit of forest. I love that. Love that. Okay, now here comes the fun part. We have all this color that we should have been putting underneath. We're gonna to have to clean our brushes. So I'll be right back after I clean these brushes and we're gonna pop back onto your screen, right? All 
All right, now we don't, I mean, you could do it. We could make the colors up as we went, or we could put some under color under there like I normally like doing. So why don't we take a little bit of our blue, and say, I don't know, about right here, put a little bit of blue waterfall as it comes down, right? And then it might hit the water, and the water might take up, I don't know, this part of the painting, we'll say, right? And then we can, when we hit it with our white paint, it's gonna turn real light and blue. It'll be gorgeous, there'll be differences everywhere, right? Let's say our waterfall comes out, and straight down into our water, and then our water is moving this way. And that's gonna look pretty neat. Now, I wanna have some sort of color back behind this little thing that we've got planned over here. This is mainly gonna be all rocks and foliage, so let's do a little bit of, why not do crimson? Let's do a little bit of our crimson, and put that in back here, just very lightly. Let it mix in, kind of turn into the purple color because we've got the blue on our brush. Just in case we need a little bit of color back there. If not, it'll look very, very, very dark. That looks really, really, really cool. Really cool, Josh. Put a little bit of crimson down here too, just in case. We can have all sorts of stuff. But in, in any case, it'll be a deep, dark shadow for all of the paint that we can use, right? Mixing it all up with the purple. Kind of crimson, purpley blue, blue and blue right here. Fantastic, wash that brush off, now we'll get to paint. Get to painting, Josh. Now, in order to do a waterfall, we're gonna come out here, and we're gonna slide it off the side, and then we gotta decide what's back behind here first. So, let's do a little bit of our kind of black and crimson and blue, but mainly, the thalo green, just so we have a little bit of difference in there. The blue and the green, we take a bit of the white, light that up, oh yeah, a bit more of the white, there we go. Light this guy up like that. And then maybe back here, we'll pop in a couple little, little things that maybe lived back in there. Just little different trees, smaller babies that haven't grown up all the way yet. Just so we have a little bit of color that we can play off of. Bam, just like that. Very cool, take these guys, slide them up, so they're nice and flat, they're blended in. Poof, and all of a sudden we have a very cool little bit of backdrop color. We can even do that over here. I like that color so much. We can do some of that right over here. And little things maybe live inside here. Different little trees, a little bit of forest that's growing up on top of whatever we have. Just a little difference in color. That's all we really need. Hide some of that base of those bigger trees back there. Very cool. And people are gonna be like, ooh, that's a very cool color, I like that. All right, let's take our white paint. Right, well, we need to make up a space to work in. So let's grab our knife, scoop her up, put it over on the old paint pile. You should see that paper towel, it is foul. Okay, grab this guy, grab our, our light colored fan brush. It really only gets white on it, so he stays very light. All right, got our white right on the edge, just like this. And then we're gonna come slide over to the side and then drop right off, okay? So I don't like having it straight. I like having it sort of on an angle, like a downward 45 degree angle. So we're gonna come over that blue bit, drop right off the edge, just like that, bam. Very cool little thing. Blend our little blue water lines back and then we can cover over them and that's where our waterfall just popped off from. Okay, maybe we can take the little bit of this guy back here and it could be a little bit of spray and get that lighter blue color to come up, just the smallest bit. And it may light up some of those trees that are back there. That is a very cool little thing, just like that. Got caught on the water, right? Now, whatever part we just messed up, you go back in with your white and you come across, pull that waterfall down. Doesn't have to be perfect. And that's why we put that blue color underneath so we don't have to create a blue color. It just all of a sudden does it for us. Drop it down however you want. Don't want to have too many little bits though. All right, you got to come to our edge, drop it down, maybe put like a little bit of a, a little bit of a splash zone right at the edge where it's going to drop and then right beneath that, that's got to be our thing. And the more you go over this, the more it's going to change. So don't do too much. We'll put a couple of rocks right there. Maybe we can do it just with this little brush, the little guy, a little bit of black. Just pop in a little stone, just like that. 
never going to be perfect, right? It's always going to be little bits that don't get covered up by the waterfall. Maybe take the bottom of that. Oh yeah, a little bit of shadow comes down off of him. Looking pretty neat. Cool little things. Not just one, not just one thing, right? Yeah. All these little differences. Differences in color. A little bit more white because I want it to be nice and bright as we come down. Just like that. Very cool. Say it comes down, it hits the bottom down here. You get a couple little splashy bits, but I want to take my foam and my spray and really just like it's very softly hitting down here. So it's creating a lot of spraying foam. Take our one inch brush, make them very soft. Don't touch your waterfall though. Touch your waterfall and it's not going to look the same. Maybe take this guy, pull some of that straight down. You can kind of tell where the, the water is now hitting down on the on the water. <laughs> where the water is now hitting down on the water. Let's take this just as a reflection and pull it up just from the bottom. Just in case we go with a reflective pool, then we'll have that very cool little bit. And we know that our splash is going to be right in the middle of both of those little guys. So... Come back with our white one more time, just on one side of the brush. Then we're gonna flip that where the brush, you know, the paint is. That we just added, pop in a few little bits. They look like grass, they look like, you know, bits of splash, look like tree limbs. We can make them look however we want. Now let's take some of that white and we'll come from back here, just ever so lightly, just scrubbing in a bit of color. It doesn't have to be super bright back there. We're gonna line up here with our, with our little bits of water that we've already created, All right? Start to really swipe them in on this side as we fill up. Get all those beautiful colors. Look at that. That is fantastic, All right? Don't want to cover everything. Doesn't all have to be the same color. And we're still going to try to save that small little bit of that reflective water in case we need it, just in case. Now we're going to take our two inch brush and flatten these guys out from each side, drag all the way from the side, all the way across. Look at that, the more we do that, the more it looks like water, to me anyway. <laughs> and that's who we're watching, right? Maybe there's a couple stones that live out there. Let's get a little bit of our black, a little bit here, and just pop in like a little stony little rock. Boom, we'll make him work. All right, maybe there's another one over here, a little bit bigger, just a little bit darker, just like that. Okay, take those guys very lightly, because you don't want them to grow very far, right? Very lightly, swipe them off, and all of a sudden we got a little bit of stone in our water. Our water is stoned. We gotta call somebody. A couple little bits, little differences. That's all we're about, little differences, right? Okay, we need to create the cliff that's over here. So all this stuff is gonna sit on a bit of rock, right? And this rock's gonna come out Maybe it comes down in front of our waterfall and pushes some of that back. All right, come back, get that dark. Really get it on there. We got these cool little bits of rock that ended up, look at that, that is fantastic. Okay, pull that rock away and you have that very dark color, but it does stand out against the black as being part of, you know, you know this stone, a, a different thing. Gonna cover up a little bit more of where that river comes out of because I don't like seeing that much of it. There we go. Got to cover stuff up. Cover it up. Here's our river bank down in here. Let's just pop in a few little bits just by pushing up, just like that. Take these guys very, very, very lightly because they're gonna want to grow too, just like the rocks, right? Now all of a sudden we have something that our our rock is sitting on, and now all of this is water. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Let's take our knife, a little bit of that whitish, bluish color, a little bit of the liquid white, mix them up slightly, scrape her up, come around, make cool little bits, just using the back corner. If you ever have problems with it and you think it's too big, just use a corner of it. You don't have to use the whole thing. Boom, just like that, right? Come back in, what do we do with our water lines? We pull them down very lightly, go over the side. Now we have a little bit of disruption in our water just like that, very light. Just so we have that little difference in color, little ripples, little things happening as our water is moving past. And you can take some like this and like it's got little, little waves rolling through. 
cool little things, differences, little differences. And if you add something underneath, a little bit of darkness underneath there, then it becomes a little flat shelf that our water has to then move around. Little different things. Come back to our watercolor. Not watercolor, but you know what I mean. There we go. Cool little bits. Cool little bits of something neat by Josh. That's what the painting show is going to change to. Cool little bits of something neat by Josh. Man, that's neat. Because I must say, man, that's neat a lot. Put our darkness back in here. That same dark color we've been using, right? All this light's not going to reach down here too much. So we don't have to worry about highlighting a whole lot. Take some of our dark color and pull it back and it becomes the bank. It becomes the bank of our little thing down here. What lives down there is my question. I gotta have some tree or some sort of something that lives down here. So let's take our two dark colors, three dark colors, create our kind of real dark purpley black, nice and thick. And let's say one of these big old trees like that live back here. And let's just pick a bright spot, pull them down from maybe dead center. We do that, maybe in front of this guy. The more we go down, the harder and harder and harder we push till you get to the bottom. Okay, now we got a tree separated from all that stuff back there. Very cool. I'm gonna take our, back to our paint thinner, cup right into the big paint pile, nice and thick and gross, trying to make it really thin. Trying to have a couple little branches that just stand out away from, you know, pick your light areas and try to create a branch. You can always go higher. You can cover over things from the back, right? We're never gonna see all this stuff from behind. You can make your tree bigger. You can push it back. You can do all sorts of stuff. The world is your oyster. You want it very thin though, so all of your branches can track over the different other branches back there. Gotta be thin. Gotta be thin. All the way down from the top, bam. Cool a little bit. My trees keep having to grow because my branches get too thick out at the end. There we go, very neat. Scraggly little guy. Okay, this guy maybe has got one more in here. It's kind of going off this way. Remember, if they're big and thick out at the end, they've got to be thick where it connects to the tree down here so you can add another little bit to help them. There we go, that's very cool. Now, how are we gonna highlight these with no brown? Let's take a little bit of our kind of reddish, purplish, crimson, maybe a little bit of the green and the yellow. Let's try to make a brown out of this stuff. Just mix them up nice and good. Throw a little bit of white in there, see what we got. If we add a little bit more crimson, there we go. We'll have this cool little tree trunky color. Now I want to come on the side of our tree trunk and just go off to the side. It's such a dark brown color, you might not even be able to see it, but we're way down at the bottom of this ravine. Right now, right here, we might change. We might need to add a little bit more white and brighten up the color of our bark like this as the sunlight starts to hit it in different places as it's climbing up to the top of the tree. See what I mean? And that may be an extreme example, but we can go over it and mix it in until you can't really see the bottom or you can't, or it's not such a crazy difference. There we go. Cool little bit. Doesn't have to go all the way to the top. Don't worry about it going all the way to the top. Grab a little bit of liquid white, come into that same color we just made, just so it thins it out enough that if we stick it on top of our little branches, it'll be a cool little bit of highlight. Right? Don't want them to be super bright, right? They're not the focal point of the painting. We don't, we just want to be able to see that they were there and they got some light. Right? Doesn't even have to light up the whole thing and each of them are going to be different. They are going to change. So don't worry about it. Yeah. Just like that. I'm trying to make it brighter. Here we go. A little bit of brightness off that guy, maybe off the back. Very cool. Oh, we got one more to do. One more. Almost forgot him. Almost forgot the little guy. Just with that lighter gray color that we made our bark with, added with a little bit of the liquid white. 
And then you can kind of highlight our trees and that way we know this one's kind of standing out in front, standing way down here at the bottom. Now, I've got this really cool idea and we're definitely gonna have to do it, but let's save it for the end. Let's come over here, get a little bit of that dark mixture and just pop in a few little bits of bushes that live down on our bank that cover the tree. They do, it's just so it's a little bit rough. All right, maybe they gotta come down a little bit more for our perspective. There we go, that's better. Very cool. Ooh, it could be like a little pond. We could just continue to grow these little things all the way around. Anything is possible when you paint with Josh. Right, just like that. All right, we need to highlight these little guys. So let's get a little bit of our liquid white up onto the brush, pull it over here, flatten it out so we've got a fair amount of space to work with. Let's get the yellow and the green. We'll make this gorgeous kind of greeny, grassy color. A little bit more, flip it over, drag it through so it's nice and sticky. And then we'll come up here just tapping it and whatever comes off, comes off. All right? don't wanna cover up everything. Doesn't have to be super bright. Especially over at the corner, doesn't have to be super bright. That is for sure. Now, we need to add in a little bit of our water line. So let's get a little bit more of that liquid white up into our white, mix it in, come back in here, and now we'll be able to tell where our little shoreline is for this little guy. Goes off like that. Very cool. Very cool little thing. We can put in another tree over here. We can do all sorts of stuff, but I really like the way that is. And if we're gonna do that, why don't we add that same kind of darkish color back here? See if we can't add just a little bit of detail on these rocks. You don't wanna bring it too close to your tree because then we've got the same color here on our tree, right? Just a little detail, just like that. My goodness, that is fantastic. Okay, now we're gonna work on the other side of the painting. I'm gonna come over here and say we had a little bit of rocky bit there. So let's have a little bit of rocky bit here and maybe it covers over our a little bit of waterfall, just like that. Again, we're gonna slide it back away, leaving the little brush strokes. Like you wanna have little things. There we go. Doesn't even have to go all the way to the bottom if you don't want it to, it can, right? But now we've just covered up all of our, our uh, foam that we left back there. So what was the point of putting that in there, Josh, right? But it's okay, we can come back and we can grab a little bit of that white Drag it up inside here. Now we got a little foam at the base of our rocks. Very simple. Very simply, very easily done. Swipe it. We're gonna come in and fix our water line over there. Say we have our issue like this. And it just goes off, bam. Very cool. Very cool little thing. Remember, trying to keep all this area dark so we don't know what we're gonna do. We could put trees in the front. We could do all sorts of stuff. But we don't know what's gonna happen. Now, I'm gonna come over here, we're gonna shape out our cabin. It's gonna live right here, right? Scrape down, turn our knife, scrape down, go over to the side. I don't have much paint there, so I'm not scraping off a lot. It'll be right there at the front. And that's the best part about a black canvas. There's not much paint there to scrape off. Now, let's go back, grab up our dark color, flatten it out real flat, scrape up a little bit, come back in here straight down come over here tilt it this way straight down now we have our little building front oh wouldn't I love to live here you guys oh my come off to the side straight across though and then we're gonna pull it down at an angle there's our roof and we've got a bit of our wall back here very simple little shape to to do to accomplish but you want to have your dark parts go down far enough and they've got to be a little thick because they have to collect that paint that you want to have show up okay now we're going to do a little bit of our kind of white mixed with that lighter color just to make like that grayish so it's not white sort of gray come on the side of this roof on that side poof it's got a little bit of light up there and we'll go across and we'll do little Little lines. He's got like a little saggy old roof, this guy. His roof is in state of repair. Just straight across. There we go. Bam. Take some of this white. Let's see if we can't grab it and light up just a little bit of what we have underneath as our wood. 
right? It doesn't need to be white. We want it to be that grayish, brownish color that we had made, just like the rocks and everything else. Pull it straight down. Doesn't matter if you even go too far. Ooh, look, that little opening right there, that could be our door. Just automatically, it was like, hey, here's a door. I said, okay. A little bit of that darker color over there. Because again, saggy old roof, saggy old building. Doesn't need to be super bright. But we do want to have a difference between the light side and the dark side. So let's brighten it up a bit. All right, just by pulling straight down. Just like that. My goodness. Now, what, why, why did I paint this guy so high up on top of his little rock, right? What, what, what is Josh doing? No one knows. I'm gonna flatten him off. Remember, there's no other thing back here. There's no other paint, it's just that dark color. The only paint we have here is that bit that we had slid on to the rock. All right, so what if we did this? Came down, came up, right? Made our little V shape, down and up, down and up. Man, that looks rad. Boom, just like that. We got our little cabin. Now. Let's throw this guy on stilts. He's not afraid of heights. So first actually, save that dark color. Let's go back, grab up some more of this mountain color and just on the edges of this guy. Remember, it doesn't have to be super bright. You just wanna have a little bit of different detail, some sort of something in the rocks, a little bit of shadow, a little bit of something. Just blend it back, just so it's different. There, just like that. This guy back here, we don't even need to fill back all the way. Right? It's in darkness. The light can't reach that far. And we know exactly where our light's coming from in this one. Okay, now we're going to come over here. We're going to grab some of that dark. And we're going to throw just on the corner, just a little like fence post down into the water. Like he's being held up like that. Little, little thing. Because you got to come back. Right? Maybe on this corner. Pop him in front of that rock. It's got to go a little bit further down than the other one does. Okay? His back corner would be about back here. And that one rests back there. All depends on how far you go down, right? And maybe the very, very, very back one would be off the canvas. We don't even need to, to hold, to show that one holding. Okay, let's get up a little bit more of that green and, and red mixture. Bring it down here, scrape it up. Start adding white slowly till we get that grayish color back. There it is, just like that. Come on the edge, I'm gonna have to cut in front of you and just do the littlest bit of highlight on these little bits of wood. They don't need to be the whole thing. You just got to touch and let go, go back, reload, and then touch and let go again. Just like that. Very cool. Very cool, man. Very cool. Now, maybe he needs like a little bit of deck right here. It comes out. Right, and then it comes out this way. So he's got like some flooring to stand on. Grab a little bit of that color and show we've got a difference in our changing of our wood now. See, we've got something that this piece is hanging on. And maybe have it hang off the side just a little bit. That always looks cool to me. When it's like, you know it got built by a person when the lines crisscross and they hang off the edge, right? Very cool. All right, let's do a little bit of a bridge right here, like a little rope bridge. Come over here, scrape up little bits, right? Maybe there's a little, a little thing right there and a little thing right there. A little post just off the edge. All right, we can go back, scrape up some more of that gray. And again, just touch the one side, the right side in this case, just like that. Very cool. And then we should be able to feed a little bridge right there, just a little one. So uh, we might want to just leave it, Josh. It just looks so good. If we try to do too much, it's not going to look as good. Let's add, let's add, we're going to have to add a boat. How's this guy going to get anywhere? Maybe he goes across. Let's add a bridge right there, just across the... The room. We don't have to come all the way to his front door. That's better, Josh. That's not so big. There we go. A little bit of our thing there. And we got the other pole. And just on the side. 
There we go. And two little things. Off in the woods. Get a little bit of our dark color, our crimson, our black, our blue. It doesn't really matter. It's just going to be like a silhouette. Onto a little liner brush. And see if we can't do a little rope bridge. Okay. This is obviously the flat bottom part of the bridge. Right across our little waterfall. Now I'm going to switch to a much smaller brush if I'm going to do the top lines. We're going to get a lot of paint thinner into our little black area. A lot of paint thinner, Josh. It's going to be very small little lines. I'm going to switch. I'm going to go over to the mall stick. And then maybe just like this, put a little smiley face down there. All right, from one thing to the next. Little smiley. And then we're gonna do the same thing, just a little bit lower. Let's get some more paint thinner so we can make sure it's really thin and really wet. And this guy, we're gonna come down in front of that other one just slightly and then come back up. Bam. That's a cool little bridge, in my opinion. Cool little bridge. See if we can't get the bottom of this guy really dark, though. Because it wanted to mix in with all that light color. Really cool. That's cool. That looks like a bridge in my eyes. A little rope bridge for our guy to cross. Very cool. Wonder if we did little sideways or diagonal hash lines if it would look like pieces of wood, maybe? Maybe not. That's all good. There we go, that helps at least. If you put those little lines in there and then you come back with a really dark line, it's gonna save it. Remember, it's trying to mix with all that white paint that's underneath with our, our blue and white little bit. So come back, make sure it's dark, make sure it doesn't change the hue. And just like that, that's very cool. Now I remember why we saved this little area over here. Let's say there's a little bit of bush kind of living at the top of that guy, right? To kind of hide the bottom of it. So that guy needs just a small little touch of highlight in there. Very cool little thing, kind of growing over our bridge. Maybe we get a little, a few little bits that want to grow down. Trying to grow down onto our, our rocks. You got all that moisture there. A few little green things start to grow down and hang from our our thing, that's very cool. Very cool. Okay, I don't wanna cover over our tree, but we do wanna show that there's a few more of those little bushes that came across the path back here. All right, go back, pick up that same green, come back in here, just touching different angles, different thicknesses, All right? And maybe again, those little guys wanted to come down and just grow down over the edges of these rocks back here. You know what I mean? Cool little things, all by changing the perspective of our, our little bits of moss, we've made that thing look round now, which is very neat. Very, very neat. Get some of them more bright on this guy. Maybe there's some that just grow right on the top of him, on the top of his little rocks down there. Cool little things. Cool little things. Just by dabbing them in, you get little things that start to live and grow and do all sorts of crazy stuff over there. Fantastic. All right, what did we use this for? Oh, we were going to do a little... Oh, I got you. That's how he gets to his house. He's got to have a few little stairs to come down, right? So let's put them all stick down. Let's pick the palette knife up. And let's come into our dark section again, right? Make up a good little dark bit. That's all we need. A little dark section of paint, a little shadowy bits, right? Flatten it out, scrape up a little amount, and we're gonna start to create our stairs. And they can't just go straight down, it'll look like a ladder. So we have to go off to the side over here, and maybe over there. 
and it starts to come down this way. And then it flattens out and it comes down this way again. Just by pushing in these cool little bits of dark paint. Now when we go over the top of them with that lighter color that we're making with our crimson and our phthalo green, mixing that up into a, this grayish color, right? Always gotta go back and add a little bit of white. And that brightens it up to that gray. And then go back and crimson it if you need it to be darker. Don't add more green. There we go. That's a cool little bit. It's kind of lavenderish, greenish, grayish. It will come to the top. Maybe there's that one little bit of stairs, got a little bit on it. It goes over that way. It starts coming down this way. And there's another little step. Just by touching, right? By touching, it's all we're doing. Leaving a little roll on top of the line that we had initially put down there. Maybe this is that flatter area. I mean, it's a little bit big, but that's okay. We can make, we can go over that with some dark. Still got paint on the brush though. Let's go down this way. Just stepping down every so often. And now we've got a little bit of track that we can lead up there, right? Take that dark color, go back and just fill in the space where you don't want your white to show. And just like that, got a cool little bit. Take the guys that are right here on the edge, pull them down from the steps. All right, let it blend in. And all that is is just a little bit of shelving for our steps, right? You had somebody had to carve it out to begin with. Somebody had to carve this guy out. So that's the cool little stony bits, right? Same thing up here. Take those guys. Littlest bit though. You don't need a whole lot. That was too much. See? Especially on these dark canvases where there's nothing there, you can get to a point where you have too much paint. So what do you do in that case? Start from the bottom with your dark and go up and it blends that, that lighter dark, uh, lighter color away. All right, start from the bottom, go up, poof. Now it's all of a sudden changed. All right, maybe there's a little bit in there. Or there's some shadows, or there's some something. There's some sort of something in there. This guy has the coolest house I think I've ever seen. There we go, have our little step extend that way. Now we know we can climb up and get to home, right? All right, speaking of home, now that we've got this side pretty much done, never want to have too much paint on there, that's for sure. There we go, we've got our little flat ledge we can climb up to. All right, this guy needs to be a little bit, there we go. Now we got our steps, climb it up to home, guys. Speaking of home, let's go over here, maybe the front of his, you know what would look cool? If we can get just a little bit of light on that rope and have that light up, right? We have a little bit of light here, just the smallest touch. It's so small that I don't even want to touch it. There we go. Now a little bit of light blended in again. You can't blend too much because it's so small. Right? But that's all we're looking for is just a little difference on that rope for it to look like a rope so it's a little bit lighter there we, go. there we go not so bright but it'll pick up your eye and that's the best part is when someone's like "Ooh, look at that i've never noticed that before all right come down very small very small little details go back over it like one or two times as softly as you can and literally as softly as you get, barely even touching it, right? And we got our little rope bridge. I think the rope down here is a bit too far down, but it is what it is. It's a saggy old place, right? Saggy old place. It looks like it needs a little bit more like walkway off the back of the thing back there. There we go. Bringing them up to the house, right? Cool little thing. I mean, we can get crazy. We could put a fence around this house, like a little ledge that he can walk around. You can do all sorts of stuff. But let's take, and maybe this is the back. Oh, this is the back. Let's take a big window right here. Scrape that out, and then we can look into the guy's cabin. That's going to be cool. Take this window over here, same thing. Scrape it out so it's nice and dark. And try to make them the same size. At least this guy was anal retentive about that. But that is a cool looking thing. Now, what we do need though, maybe this guy is safety conscious and he's got a little, like a little thing around the edge. 
just for my own brain. Right, got a little like a fence post, a couple fence posts around the side, just in case he drinks too much, he's not gonna fall off, right? Come back in. Now these guys are all upside down, so. There we go. Now, that first one doesn't really have to stand out so much. There we go, just little things, don't cover up all of the darkness little things on our little fence posts. And these guys back here, they may not get a whole lot of sun, but you know what they are. You know what they are. Those are cool, man. Those are cool. We could even do like little side beams and all sorts of stuff too. You literally could. What if we took just a little bit of the light color instead of the shadow and just tapped in a couple little beams I need to cut that one in across that paint, but that looks pretty real to me. Pretty real. This guy's on a little upward angle, but that's pretty neat right there. Awesome, 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 possum. Okay, let's decide where our little legs live in our water very slightly. Pull it down. Maybe that guy lives back there on the edge in all that term the turbulence. This guy over here. And that guy back there, about the same height as the other one, right? Very cool. And then our fourth one is missing, which is fine. That's fine. That's fine though. Okay, let's see. Let's see what else we can do. Maybe a little liquid white around the edge of this guy. Not everywhere though, and they don't even have to touch. Like your little wavy bits, they don't have to touch. No one said they had to. Like that guy. It's just a little lip, cool little lip out the water. There's some sort of something that's hidden underneath that's causing ripples, right? Very cool. Don't stretch that guy too far, though. Don't stretch him too far. Okay, I'm going to swipe over these very softly. Very softly. Look at this, guys. Very cool, a little bit of the darkness in there just to change it up, just so it's not perfect, right? A little flat stone. You know, what we're missing is a little bit of highlight on our stones here. We're only gonna do one side, leaving the other side dark. So where do you think the light's gonna hit it? Here we go, now we have to go back and cover up that, that bit of dark, otherwise it's gonna be like a mix up to our brains. There we go. Very cool, very cool. A little bit more of that darkness. Anytime that your area of light is too thick, throw a bit of dark underneath and it's a little, it becomes a little shadow. Right? If it's too thick right there, you throw that little bit of darkness, then it gives it a lip that it has to climb over. And that's what makes it look all ripply. Very cool. I don't think I want to do anything else in the front, really. I mean, this painting is rad. I like it. I like it. These rocks are cool. We've got the... Uh, the stone steps, those are freaking cool. It just looks neat. Whew. Anything else we do might ruin it, right? Anything else we do, let's put a little bit more of our water. If we're not gonna finish the end, let's put a little bit of our water back in here. As it's just kind of scraping it in. Leaving it like that, very cool little bits. Very cool. Trying to make it so it's not just a, a thing. There's some turbulence here. There's something going on. Something happening. Gotta cover up too much of that white, right? There we go. Make it, go make it go black again. Make it go dark. You only need a little bit. There we go. Very cool. We could do all sorts of stuff, but I like this, guys. I like it. I'm going to call it done. Let's put one more. We'll put another rock right in here. Oh, you know what? We could do this as land. That would be cool. Okay. Let's do this. Take our little bit of grassy area and roll it right down through here. And that way, look at that reflective light off of the, the thing. Everything is fantastic. But you pop up just a couple little bits in there, little differences that people are going to find. All right, like that. 
And maybe we'll throw a big rock on there too. But let's do the grass first. A little bit of our liquid white right here through our yellow and green. Maybe that light just came down and it just had such a fine day that it lit up this whole little area. Bits of light and dark. Just like that. Just by smacking up at it. Very cool little thing. Very, very cool. All right, now let's take the, our palette knife. Let's throw a rock in here. I mean, there's a little stone and he lives, I don't know, right in there. Just a little guy. All right, take our little stony color. And we're only doing half of him. And the rest is dark. Gotta let it be dark. And I guess we could stick one little tree over here. Like a, like a little twiggy guy. Maybe he comes up from here and he just goes off like that. Cool little thing. All right, take the bottom of him. Make it nice and dark with our bits of grass, kind of hides it in there. Take our highlight color back to our little kind of woodish, purplish, lavendery color, and just hit the one side. Just like that. Very cool. Very cool. Last little bit of our highlight underneath. That was very bright, but works. Fantastic. A little bit of our highlight paint on the side. Very cool, got our things over there. Everybody's rocking and rolling. Maybe we had a few little bits of moss try to grow down onto our our bits of uh, coming off of our um, stairs. There's cool little things that happen. Cool little things that happen. Maybe this guy had a shelf of moss and it started to grow down that way. Just cool little things. <laughs> it just changes everything up. Back there is very super dark, I like that. I like that it's so dark back there. You can't really tell what's going on. Take our one inch, just swipe the bottom of that out just very slightly. And that's a cool, cool painting, guys. Cool painting, Josh. Thanks, Josh. There we go. Right on. Neat little things happen when we take our time, right? Taking our dark color. Just kind of giving some, some deeper shadow back to that one little piece back there. There we go. Just so we can highlight it. Bam. Boom, boom, boom. One little stick right off the front. See, but that one little stick just looks funky without a little bit of darkness underneath it. So you got to have those differences, that's for sure. That is for sure. A little rock. I don't know what he is. It looks like flapjacks to me. There we go. Make it stand out a little bit more. All right, besides that, guys, there's really nothing I would do to this painting. It turned out fantastic. Cool little things that happen when we take our time, right? Very neat. Let's cover over the side so we don't have to do it later. Make sure everything's nice and filled in. And this is one of my most favorite paintings, that's for sure. Most favoritist, that is for sure. Now, what we did miss a little bit, put a little bit of um, light color just on the opening of his window right there. And then the opening of his window right here. It's like a little ledge. I don't want to have too much of it on there, though. There we go. A little ledge for our guy. Boom. Just like that. Even we show even the mess ups, right? That's how it goes. You know what looks cool in these old cabins too? If you take a little bit of darkness and put it kind of under the, re the, the eave of the roof. And sometimes it, it creates little dark holes like the cabin's been there for a really, really, really long time. So, all right guys, well, I think we're gonna call this one done. This one turned out to be one of my favorites. That is for sure. I'm gonna get our birds up in the sky, sign the sucker and call it done. So, I wanna thank you guys for watching, for tuning in, for checking it out, for doing all the cool things that you guys always do. We need to really fix these branches first. 
They're crisscrossing, but they weren't crisscrossing correctly. So thank you for the love and the comments and the shares and the likes and all the great things you guys do to keep me doing this. All your comments are always so nice and I, I get down sometimes and I'm like, I don't know that I want to keep doing this. And it's a lot of extra work and I don't think that people appreciate it. So if you're one of the ones that appreciate it and you want to see more videos, leave a comment when you're watching the video. Make sure you like it, make sure you comment and make sure you share. And by doing all of those things, it's going to help me reach more people, which is going to, of course, allow me to make a little bit more money and buy more canvases and more supplies and do all the cool things like we've been doing. So if you want to keep seeing free videos and neat little things, then make sure to like my stuff and most importantly, support my store. You guys support the store, then we have all sorts of things we can buy and, uh, and do differently, right? We can do cool little, I've got a very cool little coffin scene coming up. It's really neat. There we go. Nice little bit of bush right at the edge of our, our stairs. That makes sense right there. Very cool. Starting to grow down just like water does. Very neat. Uh, and maybe it hit down here on our stairs and started growing. Yeah, very cool. And then we come back out through there. Or who knows where the stairs even go. I don't knows. You knows. I don't knows. There we go, guys. Very lightly, just to make it soft, right? All right, well, again, I've got a mountain of brushes to go clean up, like I always do. And I want to thank you guys for for watching the video, like you always do. And, uh, you know, this one came out fantastic. I love it. I love everything about it. I'm definitely going to do black gesso more often. And, um do crazy cool things like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you try it and I hope you send it in. Uh, you can uh, catch us on Friday nights for Friday Night Freestyle, Sunday mornings for Sunday Seascapes or Wednesdays when this video comes out and um, all sorts of cool things happening all the time. So remember to support the store, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Follow me on youtube.com slash paintwithjosh, facebook.com slash paintwithjosh and then you can go to TikTok and Instagram at paintwithjoshk. Uh, besides that, you guys take care. Have the rest of a good day. And uh, besides that, you guys are obviously excited about painting this painting. That's why you clicked on the link. So check the description down below. Find all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas size with. Get ready to do another blooper. And ba boom That's where you do it at. Hey, guys. He guys. Who guys. He. He guys. That's what it sounds like to me. Hey, guys. Welcome back to paint. <laughs> hey, guys. Welcome back to paint. Hey, guys. My goodness. This is just, let's take a break. Let's not, let's do it. Let's keep going, just keep, keep raging on. Hey guys, welcome back to Paint With Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch gorgeous sunrise deep in the forest, cabin on stilts with a rope bridge over a waterfall, stairs, trees, grass, moss, sun rays, clouds, everything you can think of, we go over in this video and you're obviously excited about painting it. So check the description down. So check the description down below. Find all the colors you need. Make sure you get your kit. Welcome back to Paint With Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas. First time ever using black gesso. It's how we got all these gorgeous sun rays in there. It was fantastic. So, uh, hi guys. Welcome back to Paint With Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas. First time we ever did black gesso. We did liquid white on the top, liquid clear. Why am I explaining this? You're going to see it in like 20 seconds. Hey guys, welcome back to Paint... Hi guys, welcome back to Paint With Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas. First time using black gesso before we actually painted. That's stupid. Hey guys, today, you guys are obviously excited about painting this one. That's why you clicked on the link. So check the description down below. So check the description down below. Find all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Hi guys, welcome back to Paint With Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas. First time ever using black gesso. We did our, our trees before. You'll have to just wait until about 20 more seconds to find out how we did it, right? And uh, yeah, I don't know why we have so many bloopers today. Let's get it knocked out, Joshy Poo. Here we go and... Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. We're gonna do it just... So, make sure you get... <laughs> I've lost it. Lost it.